from the rip, we see Capcom's goal with the direction they wanted to take this remake, immediately giving us more of a horror atmosphere. We've got a scene not found in the original of the Los Illuminados crew doing a TikTok prank gone too far, giving a hint to us new players what we're diving into in Leon. We see their old religious symbol being poured over and tainted with blood, visually showing us their fall. Even more interesting seeing how their symbol has changed. And that night, Raccoon City was wiped out thanks to the bioweapons created by Umbrella. These games for all intents and purposes are not connected, and it wouldn't matter too much if you didn't play two going into four. Hot take, I know. But it's nice having a little recap about what happened to Leon and some exposition into the mission before just being dumped into the world. Even if I would have loved that too. The training, punishing missions, nearly killed me. I played four, then two, and seeing how green Leon is in two really took me aback for a second. He's seriously the cutest little thing in that game. It's quick and succinct finding out why Leon is such an action hero badass in 4. Would I have just accepted Leon doing backflips in this game? Probably, but we've been mean about other characters in our stories doing outlandish things with no training, so I gotta be fair here. Check it out, Krauser and Leon sparring with their knives. Seems he's giving him a bit of advice on how to use knives next time. And they're using Krauser's knife, which is all cute and poetic. Speaking of that, Leon uses the knife throughout here that Marvin gave him in the RE2 remake. Oh, now, that's a pretty sick transition. I didn't even realize Leon was fading in until he was doing the move we all did on the bus as a kid. Thinking we're an anime protagonist and all that. And with hair like that, Japanese developers and our waifu Ashley, yeah, this game is just a sneaky way of delivering an anime to the West. Why did you come to this horrible place? As close to nowhere that I've ever seen. Let's just say, looking for someone. There are a lot of minor story changes from 4 to the remake, all mostly positive, I'd say. At every step, Capcom decided to ground the story a bit more. Like here, instead of just saying, I'm on an important mission looking for Paltus' daughter. Leon intelligently keeps his cards close to his chest. With his newfound trading and level ahead, we're immediately getting a new idea for how he's changed. I'm sure you boys didn't come all the way out here to roast marshmallows. <laughs> Maybe you did. Well, actually, it was the Ganados that did. Nature calls, huh? I'll be right back. Though the remake moves away from the awesome B-movie feel of things at times, it can't escape using the pooper as the inciting incident to kick off your spooky story. Uh-oh, we've got a crucifix logo of our baddies, and naturally it's only Leon who notices it. I love Leon a lot, but we do have him to blame for a whole wave of people thinking they could pull off this haircut. Not shaming anyone, but this is an almost impossible look, yet he looks dashing. God, does RE Engine constantly blow me away. From 8 to 2 remake, and now this? Games are finally starting to feel like they're catching up to the hardware they're being played on. Mostly because people have consoles now, and devs can afford to not develop up to the last generation. Only took two years. Seriously, I can't wait to play this game again just because of how amazing it looks. This might be hands down my favorite title graphically right now. Not exactly a sacrificial lamb, but the Gnadus used to be Catholic, so maybe this is a bit of a weird holdover of those beliefs? Or just something spooky Capcom wanted to put in there to build tension. Who knows? Not me. Move on. Wow, does changing this intro tonight really do a lot for the setting and tone of what is to come? Before, it was just like, oh, house, let's go knock. And now it's like, oh, house, get the f*** out. We're also given the option to explore this house a bit and walk around on our own before we were given the cutscene with the Ganado, ratcheting the tension, preying on our anticipation of the other shoe to drop. That's a big note from me. Uh, sorry to barge in like this. He's in Spain. Better chance of getting through using Spanish. Something that old Leon never did, but shows that this one's a bit smarter with some more training. Leon wanted to show us the best new mechanic added to the remake. What a good guy. Also the move that we're going to use the most. Some really good sound design. Able to pinpoint exactly which direction it's coming from and going through this footage. I actually thought it was someone in my apartment complex. That's how you know you've got a gravy audio team. Mmm, giving the Baker family a run for their money, I see. Oh my god, we can go sneaky mode. It only took 20 years. Still less titles than AC to give us a crash button, though. Is it super useful? Not often, but you can save on some bullets here and there, and something really cool is you can use it to avoid tax at times. Especially considering professional difficulty, this can be a game changer. Bruce, this is Condor 1. Hunnigan here, what's your sit rep? President's daughter, Baby Eagle. Condor, Roost, Baby Eagle, why? <laughs> Y'all said what they were referred to in comms anyway, so why? Makes them sound more official, I suppose. Condors are among the largest flying birds in the world, and Leon's among the men alive with the largest dicks, so I think it checks out. And Ashley is a little Baby Eagle for, like, America and stuff. What the f is a <laughs> are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
There are many areas that are expanded upon from the original, but there was so much care into making sure that actual level layouts are super familiar and can always place where you are in the original. Customizable attache is also new. Having little charms and different cases just adds to the depth of the shop and gives even more specialization of what build you're going to run. I'm a stickler for ammo preservation and went for a full handgun and using a rifle here and there. <sighs> These got me every time. It's not often in games I actually fall for traps. Eh, just give them three days and we'll see what happens. God, do I need to get myself a jacket like Leon's? Even all this time later, it's just like Brick's murder jacket from The Walking Dead, and I love it! And here's where we really see the influence RE4 had on 8. Or basically, the entire game. I never realized how much 8 really is just first person 4, and I wish I was able to make more of those comparisons in that video. Which you should go watch after this one. I was stuck on this bit for a good 25 minutes, not understanding that you're just meant to survive until the bell rings. It's one of those iconic moments in gaming that nobody ever forgets their first time, desperately trying to stave off the gauntlet, only to have the chainsaw of the opera come in and poop on your chest. It's the lack of direction and ability to escape that makes this THE standout moment in the title. We're just as scared and confused as Leon, not knowing our objective other than SURVIVE. It makes me feel like we're at the end of Halo Reach or something. This? Thank you, Leon, for speaking for the entire player base. Huh? <laughs> you can even see my own confusion looking at the tower. RE4 is one of the most immersive games I've played in recent memory. And the remake does an even better job at having all the Ganados stop and look up in gameplay. After fighting them for half an hour, to finally see them get enamored by the bell, it was so jarring and almost unsettling to see this instead of a cutscene immediately triggering at the sound of the bell and ripping us away from Leon. It's really hard, but if you're good enough, you can actually shoot the bell to end the fight early. I think we all kind of knew something was up with them, because, you know, resurrection and all that, but if you weren't sure how bad it was, here you go. They're all brainwashed by... something. I love the OG symbol for the Ganados has now been twisted and turned into the parasite they now worship, but keep it the same shape. Where's everyone going? Bingo. He said that they did it. This is the best remake for all time. Always. Yes, this font looks nice and clean, but I do miss the days when companies were having a bit more fun with logos. The OG Resident Evil font just screamed scary. But I do understand them wanting internal consistency among all the remakes and the most recent two mainline entries. We're going to find these requests all over while playing. RE4 is still quite a linear game, but it is in the best way. Semi-open world games have lately been my favorite middle ground for games. Linear can get a bit stale and open worlds too bloated. These titles are striking the best balance. Requests are a part of that balance, giving us some simple task that forces us to explore the world more than just going through the motions. I do wish they didn't mark it on the map since they do tell us what area they're in, but you can't win them all, I suppose. New enemy types to beat your ass into the dirt too. There was always something about these tougher enemies that I had so much fun with. After getting destroyed by the character from nine over and over again, I've got a personal vendetta to kill these guys each time. Am I in love with the yellow paint? You all know no, but it's either that or wasting a lot of time walking to each and every barrel to see if they're breakable, or having them all breakable and having a chance at nothing. I think at the cost of some immersion, it's a net benefit. Would I like the option to turn them off? Probably. So there's quite a bit more level to play before reaching Luis, and it's probably because Capcom took away our beautiful running away from the border scene. If only Leon was some boulder punching asshole. Who are you? Yeah, stop right there! Leon's character is also given more depth here in the remake. He does what cops are supposed to do and asks the big cheese to freeze instead of running in trying to roundhouse kick him. Sacrificial lamb. You will receive our most sacred body. Why the hell is Sadler treating me like a Joseph Seed cutscene? With arms like those, I'm okay with him losing the jacket. Feels like the start of a saw trap. Oh wait, it was one already. I can see you're thinking. Leon's always quick to get out of a spot. When you're down and out, get you a friend like Leon. Young girl, talk now. Okay, yeah, I love Leon. I can't help myself. He's just so cool. <laughs> Teamwork. My man's just pulling out the whole nine yards to show Luis just how badass he truly is. We'll always appreciate seamless cutscene to gameplay transitions. I don't care how normal it is now. I'm a Zoomer who grew up on the GameCube and PS2. In the meantime, make your way to that church. Right. I'm probably due for confession anyway. Leon still keep it as one-liners. Every time it is so satisfying to parry the Ganados, especially when it's a flying axe. The knife was a big change and makes a knife only run kind of viable versus a meme run. And I dig that the parry indicator is there, but not so large that it's brain dead to pull off a successful one. 
over here, stranger. A beautiful, beautiful man. Probably more well known than ballistics. God, I love just how faithful things are in their own way to the original. Having him reveal his coat, but not in the cutscene. Got some rare things on sale, stranger. The voice is a little different and I don't know. I kind of like it more here. Feels just a bit more real than a cartoon character, which falls in line with Capcom's design philosophy. And the fires are purple now. We all know how much I love purple. And we still got the blue eye here for the diehards. This game is not easy. I just played on standard and the first half of the game really kicked my ass. A huge change is being able to move and aim and it feels like they've compensated for this with more enemies. Plus with Resident Evil's favorite tactic of having is rush you when you're not looking at them. You can just as easily get overwhelmed here as the OG. I'm excited though for a mod that brings back the stationary aiming and laser sight for all guns, but this added mobility and ability to move the camera independent of Leon's directions lends more to the shift that RE4 wanted to take towards action than horror in the original. There will be times I feel like John Wick running around parrying and popping heads. It's just genuine fun, this game. Speaking of the old JW, I also feel like the Punisher when Leon brings his pistol in close like this for CQC. This game really has to be the best Resident Evil combat we've ever had. It feels a little nuts how front loaded this game is with difficulty and I really enjoyed that. You're forced to learn quick and use all the tools you've learned thus far. No slow build up to hold your hand on mechanics. I mean, we did just talk about the village fight and that sentiment carries through. F*** the valley, but it was so much fun when I got the hang of it. Something that's paced well is our rematch with Chris Nolan's Scarecrow. We get just enough new gear and a 1v1 scenario to take him down properly. I never said I was good at it though. And man, those eyes. The design team are really working for that paycheck with this game. The puzzles aren't going to set the world on fire with the complexity and yeah, I do wish they are a bit more cerebral, which has sadly become the general feeling for any game not directly made as a puzzle game. But to its credit, this is an action game first and if these puzzles took too long to figure out, it would kill the momentum it's built thus far. A jump scare you can see it coming if you're paying attention. Captain America would be so proud. <laughs> Badass in a red dress. Wonder who it could be. You too, huh? Even Leon knows I can't avoid these bear traps for the life of me. And this is how we all know Leon is a good guy. Save the cat and all that. It's a screenwriting book. You should check it out. I haven't brought it up in a long time. Of course, after meeting a nice doggo, we're attacked by naughty ones. Mmm, you gotta wait for a whole animation to play to get the flashlight on, not just immediate light. And if you're busy in a dark space too, Leon won't get a chance to turn it on until your APM goes down. A giant skull, we... At least I didn't question about why the heck it exists, foreshadowing into El Gigante. Good luck finding someone big enough to use this thing. You're not Barbie then? You've already seen some of the weirdest shit ever. But same as previously, foreshadowing. The remake is to have some fun with our expectations, as the first time we enter the core, we fought El Gigante. And we're totally ready, then confused as to where our cave troll is at. I get why there's not a store. Just a quick time saver that you didn't have to pay for, Ubisoft. Eventually, we'll figure out how to optimize the case, so why bother when the computer could do it? I'll tell you. I miss having to put effort into organizing my case, as it was just another small layer to the gameplay and survival. If you've ever been camping, it's the same feeling of packing your bag as economically as possible. It's satisfying when you get it right. Next time you're playing, make sure to shoot the water about five times. You'll get a funny little bit with Leon. Besides the silly QTE of swinging back, this fight is basically a one-to-one -one of the original, and that's 100% fine because this was a blast. With how much actually wasn't changed in the remake, it shows just how incredibly ahead of its time RE4 was. Gotta have ballistics of steel for this one. Ah, sh I guess we find out what happened to the other cop. Just when we think that the Ganados and their pig and Sam for trick-or-treat variants would be all there is, we get Japan's favorite attached to a body. The upgrade system feels so good in RE4 and most other RE games. You really do get showered with money and always are able to do substantial upgrades each time you run into the merchant. This entire section looking for the church keys is all completely new. You could have fooled me that it was in the original. What's better is that it doesn't feel like padding and more scenarios to blast Ganados is fine by me. Jesus Christ! Not to worry. We are still fighting all the Gigante. And that's why you help anyone in anything you need. Never know when a pupper might come to help you fight a giant baby with control. Boy. And see, even the music sounds like a baby crying. The boss fights never really disappoint in Resident Evil. It's always some of the largest, most disgusting creatures Capcom can come up with. Okay, let's get to that church. What? No, oh my god, that was close. I can't believe I just killed that. I guess being Leon Kennedy, this is... Just another day in the office, right? And with the frequency of puzzles, just had three this one chapter. If we were to get stumped for 10 minutes in each one, it'd get old fast. Pacing, friends, it's something that even games have to worry about, and it can be harder than film trying to keep at it for 10 to 20 hours. Hmm, loving me that current slash next-gen lighting of the stained glass. 
Ashley defends herself just like the OG, but in a much less pitiful way. This is Capcom's first step to making her a much more capable character and less of a damsel. I'm here in the president's quarters and... <sighs> that one will. <laughs> Not even concerned with her getting away. Leon knows what he's capable of. I'm gonna get you home safe. Okay. Okay, Leon. She calls him Leon, confirming the trust she's granting him. I think it's cute. And bits like this, we have to work together with Ashley to progress. We need her just as much as she needs us. Come on. Spread out. Our new Ashley commands. Thank God we don't have a second health bar to manage and her AI makes her much more self-sufficient. It's a lot more free flow and it's not often that Ashley is going to end up being a hindrance. The only thing that we're missing that was an easy slam dunk would be Ashley finding us gear like Louise does later. Like, come on. Did Bioshock Infinite teach us nothing? Hey, I see you found your missing senorita. Senorita has a name and it's Ashley. You are? Name's Louise. <laughs> they got her giving her name first, like Louise always wanted. We've got her showing some gumption. Louise suavely says senorita, hinting at his allure with ballistics. And Leon actually being a character questioning Luis. Capcom took the skeleton of a scene and threw all the meat and flesh onto it to really elevate it here. Which is what a remake should do. Take what was there and approve upon it, but still honor the original. It's game time. Literally, it's time to have another difficult as fuck section. You can just see my inputs, how panicked and try hard I am in this section. If the village felt like a warm up, the valley, the side salad, and now this feels like the main course when it comes to Ganados being very horde like. But goddamn, have I mentioned this game is so fun? Because, oh my god, it is probably the best remake I've ever played. Even better than the Dead Space one, which is coming. Make sure you get subscribed to see that when it comes out. And the section is just an escalation of shit. It starts as round one of zombies with boarding up windows. Cool, got that. Then it becomes Helm's Deep, the ladder's coming up. Okay, maybe this isn't going well. Then we get Piglet from Blood and Honey showing up to ruin our day, and that's when I lost it. Leon, this way, hurry! Ashley saves us, once again, elevates her role in the story, and the escape is much better than the Ganados just stopping out of nowhere, as we've already had that done once to us. Better to keep things fresh. Blood. It's caused by something called a uh, plaga. I think Barbosa knows what that is. Plaga! Why are you helping us? Because it makes me feel better. Let's leave it at that. Hey, that's a good as reason as I've ever heard. Hey, got a smoke? I do. The kind you like. You know, I'm starting to think he's not talking about cigarettes. Which is why I'm still alive. Luis and Ada have been greatly expanded here in the remake, giving us completely new scenes that weren't even present in the original. Goes a long way in making us care when he goes at the end and when Ada is captured. Don't worry about it. We'll swim home if we have to. I mean, they kind of do. Hide. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> I love her indignation at the command. Ashley is just overall so much more tolerable and just likable beyond ballistics. <laughs> Not to be outdone by his 2005 counterpart. A little FF for you. I used to be able to do these until one time I didn't kick off the wall hard enough and my momentum kept going towards the wall and I almost broke my neck. Good times. All right, Jason Voorhees part two's girlfriends are something. I took back what I said about escalation of difficulty. Thing is, this game just starts at a 10 and just revs up from there. I am flattered. What am a one lady type of guy? Hence him not even flirting with Ashley like once this game. Boyd likes his red dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Leon's learning a bit of how to approach suspects in this area. When it comes to the Plaga, I think she first asked questions later is a bit warranted. Mmm, Capcom isn't missing with this remake, making sure we've even got these little moments, even if they're not in the same place. And thank God for the no health bar so I could do things like this with her around. It's a small one. The sound design of us navigating the UI is so damn satisfying. I kind of just got stuck listening and watching myself navigate while writing this. Abandon your body to the will of our God. <laughs> You're a missionary. You know that. Well, Mendez actually was the village chief and priest, so it checks out. Hasta luego. Did they really give Leon his very own version of Hasta la Vista, baby? This sh really is just a fun little action movie. You want to get ugly? Let's get ugly. <laughs> gold, my friends, gold! The overhaul to the Mendez fight, too. So much more going on between moves and playing around with the second floor we're given with the position of his weak point. Yay! This shot is almost one for one of the eye popping out and all. Sadly, no cute sound effect with it though. We gotta take ourselves seriously with this remake. Once again, Ashley to bail us out. This isn't to make Leon look incapable that he can't do it on his own, like a few people on this platform love to rag on with women protagonists. 
It's that they are a team. They need each other. Well, I wanted to go home, but Ashley just had to see this castle first. <laughs> he may not flirt with her in this version, but he's still got the date jokes. What is that? That is how you introduce a new enemy, Ashley. RE4 is the kind of game that almost demands multiple playthroughs, from the super satisfying combat to the amount of different weapons you try. You're gonna need to play more than once to experience it all. Such a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance, Mr. Kennedy. Okay, I think the only thing that remake may have bungled was Salazar. I loved the little eating kid that ran around a castle taunting him. I understand the change as to make this a real story with tone and such, or Something like that, but God, I would have still loved a version with all the silliness of this castle. Yeah, fat chance, Ramon. The girl's just fine with me. Oh, they're so cute. Peep her a little smile at that. So then you will comply. Yes. Never. And eh, I think I'll stop winning Ashley being independent. You get the point. Oops. <laughs> have I mentioned that this game looks incredible? Because it looks as stunning as Leon kicking me. I mean Ganados. Close your eyes. Leon has a lot of contextual dialogue and animations. Like here, how well the fight went, or when a weapon is empty, or one is left in the chamber. Gone are the really over the top traps of the old castle, and here we got more natural traps. Foolish little lamb. <laughs> no, I gotta win the sauce. I always get a kick out of someone using themselves like this as leverage. The bluff is way harder to call when the plaga is being in control. <laughs> Chopper. Chopper. Mmm, get a little foreshadowing to Mike coming in to give us a hand later. If you couldn't tell, Capcom got me with this one. Man, I was so ready to nade the ass. The nearby whispering did a lot of the heavy lifting. Would you? Well, after six years, that is one hell of a greeting. How does he even know who it is? I mean, he didn't even see her take off her sunglasses. Ada. You don't seem surprised. <laughs> even Capcom makes a joke about it. <laughs> Try using knives next time. Better for close encounters. Every time we expect to hear some iconic lines, Capcom delivers. Oh, Leon. You know I don't work in tell. Guess in tell play on words. <laughs> He's not even surprised our girl pulled a Batman on him, and no one here, I'm not either. You appear to have lost your company. She said meeting you once was enough. All the QTEs and cutscenes that once wrenched away control to show them now all happen with us staying at the wheel. It's a constant theme in the remake that almost any time, like a QTE or Salazar is talking shit, is retooled to happen while we're playing. The best part about these contextual commands is that it's the same button as Crouch every time, and you don't have to wait on the button prompt to succeed. My beautiful boy looking straight out of Saruman's army. Just give me a heads up before you stab me next time, okay? <laughs> Leon. Thanks. I don't blame old Ashley for loving Leon. I like them here though, just being more pals and kind of weird love interests. We've got Ada for that. And Ada looks the part more too with her seductive dress versus Ashley's new skorts. Sorry, I, uh, I screwed up. Come to my rescue, Prince Charming. See, Luis gets it. Some foreshadowing or I guess demonstration of the mechanics that are gonna be Ashley's shtick in her section. RE4 is the first game in a long time I couldn't wait to finish the script on so I could sooner get back and replay the game. If that's not a proof of how amazing this game is, I don't know what is. I enjoy that not everything has to be a combat encounter. I mean, I wouldn't have minded it, but it's a nice breather before taking on the horde again. Okay, yeah, REA is just first person four. We've got a village onslaught, crazy castle, then industrial ending. The only thing between eight and identity theft is a baby missing all over the place. And that's not a bad thing, as eight really does feel like the sequel to four that everyone's been waiting for. Yo, what? We're playing as Ashley? Okay, I definitely didn't see that one coming. I guess even 2005 can escape the monotonous Mary Jane section more. I guess I should rephrase it as a more educated man, Ashley section. I guess it's all right. And shakes up the pacing. <laughs> but yo, at least we get to play more into what everyone thinks Resident Evil is, which is a horror game. I've always felt horror takes second place in these games, and maybe that's a normal opinion. I don't know. Life can get weird when you don't keep up on social media. Taking where only form of defense is a good way to make us all terrified. Keck on you dirty dogs, know your audience. Babysitting's tough, huh? Hey, Ada. Ada. <sighs> Perfect. Same as ever. It's alright, Leon. You get used to being ghosted after the first or fourth time. Each and every time you see a new enemy, you'll be greeted by some lore about what the heck they are and where they came from. I had no idea these started as human until I read this note. 
Something that I've always loved about Resident Evil is that it's all science-based. And no, I'm not in love with Tom Cruise, even if he does have a church in my city. I like that all these crazy supernatural creatures are this weird bug that got inside your urethra or something that made you a little silly. <laughs> you sick fuck. You all suck. Also, Ashley choking censoring. Okay, that came out all wrong. Uh, Ashley's inability to breathe made Leon not say fuck. What, Salazar give the Plaga an ultimate accelerant? <sighs> I want you all to know how actually difficult this is for normal people like most of us. Here's me trying to get back after f***ing around too much and finding out. I'm not getting back that Yes, way. you are. A few moments later. Ah, <laughs> the swinging, not grabbing the chain at Mach 1. God damn, do I love the treasures in this game. Getting all the right jewels to make a masterpiece like this feels so damn good every time. Didn't know we were playing Alien Isolation all of a sudden. Straight up though, this motherfucker is a xenomorph. Also, another entry of, don't put your Kratos in that. If you're curious what that means, check out my God of War series. As you wish. So, Krauser trained Leon and both have the Plaga, so Leon's been connected to his memories and sees this? I don't know, but hey, Krauser is a baddie reveal. The chapters here are seriously perfect with the cliffhanger every time. Mmm, this game has a way with his iconography. Leon's jacket, Krauser's knife, or even Luis playing with his lighter. All things that could totally see a younger me looking at and desiring so much as a Christmas present. Everyone here is just so cool. None complicated though. It's a bit of a departure from what seems games want to do nowadays. Creating characters with complex motivations and making the villains sympathetic. Nah, we got a badass action hero on a mission to save the president and start it from a castle with zombie-like villains who are bad. Because I like being bad. So one, these mini games are completely new and a blast to play and give us some fun gotcha charm farming. But more to the point, Capcom remixed the OG RE4 theme here, and it's not a theme I grew up listening to, but going to YouTube and hearing it brings me back to the PS2 era anyway. I don't know if it's something to do with the audio quality or the way music was composed then, or just straight up knowing it was from that time. There's a strange nostalgia coming from a game I never played as a child for my childhood. If that's not an indictment or the power of Resident Evil 4, then I don't know what it is. Though this late into the game, I love the remake because it's a game made for gamers, not one to pander to the lowest common denominator. You're expected to play a normal and I don't know. This seems like a lot for someone who's not decently versed in gaming to handle and I appreciate that from Capcom. Slight callback to RE2. Is Leon gonna get ripped in half like his copyright? <sighs> now you owe me. Luis, heads up! Uh, now we've I saw it coming and I was elated to see it. This fight originally was fought alone, but having our contentious ally helping us makes the lava drop feel actually doable. He's just standing there, menacingly. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Jump! And that's why Leon is our main man. Always having a plan? <sighs> oh yeah. Was that a Mario reference for real? It doesn't make up for it. I know that, but still, I don't want anyone else to get hurt. I love that though he's got good intentions, his personality is still that of a silly Billy. The new knife all leads up to this boss battle. Taking what once was a QTE to something that actually takes a bit of skill and getting four parries in a row makes us feel just as badass as Leon. I'd give up right away if I was fighting someone and they straight up backflipped away from my attacks. Neat that Leon keeps his knife in the same spot as Krauser. And such a loss to the ladies of the world. Such a good change. More blowhard confidence and less creepy predator. <laughs> good things come in thirds. First, the car with the police, then meeting with Luis. And now Leon understands a bit and lights it for him. We're all gonna die someday, so why live our life in fear and not smoke? Okay, I don't think that's the point. I'm not condoning smoking, but let me have this. What do you think, Leon? People can change, right? A line looking for forgiveness and one that hits really hard for Leon as he just saw what's become of his mentor and had that question violently answered for him. You were a fine knight, Don Quixote. Kind of funny, when Don Quixote dies, he renounces chivalry and Luis's history isn't caked with much of it. And kind of beautiful as Luis called himself the squire, though Leon saying this makes him the squire if you were to line up the roles. And in the village Don Quixote died was in Spain, same as Luis here. Also, Leon's well-read? I don't know if Don Quixote counts as well-read, but I sure as hell haven't finished the two books front to back. Hey, the statues of Ramon have his little tricorn hat. Speaking of hallmarks at the time, nothing better than a good old elevator fight. Probably the inspo for the Winter Soldier fight, you know? 
little dolls you see here and charms for your case of the characters are the OG models from Resident Evil 4. This is actually the first time that Ramon looks small. Before, he's been shown from a low angle or physically above to highlight his power and status in his castle. But right before we're about to forcefully make him meet God, we see him on equal footing. You have been bestowed with lore, sadly. You talk too much. You failed. Ah, you vulgar, utterly uncivilized. Ah. There's some of that campy nature with the bullets comedic timing. Well, we've got to have a dragon at the end of the castle. I mean, just look at him. A thing I've always loved about Resident Evil bosses as there is almost never a gimmick solution to defeat them. It's always the simple pump lead until dead. See you later. I can't help but love her. Resident Evil 4 follows a beautiful three-act structure of escalating difficulty and varying settings. It all feels coherent still, though Ham with an Ezio gun is so far removed from Villager with Pitchfork. Want me to blow your mind? You can parry those too. There are a lot of hints and things to read about the Regenerators that, for once, if you don't, you stand no chance on taking these things down. As you can see, I did not, and was very confused. Eww, I hate how they slither without a leg. And the solution to defeating these guys is just cool. Could you just fire and hope for the best? Yeah, but good luck. And having the wrench inside them? I don't know. I think when a remake is this good and fresh, it should 100% be okay as a game of the year contender. Is this what they teach kids in school these days? Have you never heard of Driver's Ed? Since when did Driver's Ed consist of Bobcats? Guess being the president's daughter has its privileges. I guess now would be as good a time as any to praise what RE4 did for gaming. RE4 pioneered hard for the third person game, for cinematics, for motion capture and gaming. Between it and Gears of War, who's to say we have games like Fortnite, Horizon, or even Dungeon Defenders? Deep cut, but I f***ing love that game and the art style still holds up so well. We work well together, don't we? Please don't ask about overtime. Please don't ask about overtime. Right? Maybe someday I'll become an agent like you. Oh my god, thank you. They had a slam dunk of a remix right there. The speaker for our lord. Tell someone who gives a shit. Double check the chamber because it's not like Leon or even me, the player who freakishly reloads all the time to be empty. Ah! Baby Leon is so cute. The Krauser boss battle is the best we got in the remake. Pre-transformation, he's just taken the piss testing Leon all the things he's trained him on. Basic shooting, hand-to-hand, -hand, surprise attacks, traps, sentries, alive and robotic, and it's also a test for us to play us on all the mechanics the game has taught us up to this point. Also, let's not forget we get some horror with this fight as well. It's the total package of a boss fight. We are two sides of the same coin. And the first fight with him was like a lesson to the player about how to use knives next time. It's not until Leon proves himself to Krauser that he's a match that Krauser resorts to the Plaga to get the edge on him. Last lesson starts right now. No. Time for the teacher to be taught. He's so dreamy. Krauser told us and trained us on his biggest weakness. Use a knife against him! Even the arena is tailor made to push you towards that type of combat. <sighs> That's right. The teacher has one final moment seeing that he taught his student well. He almost says Rookie and chokes on his words and corrects himself to Leon, finally showing Rook some respect. Our final rush to the boss wouldn't be complete without an overtop of the explosions, right? And this final push is difficult and desperate. I don't know how Capcom managed to do it, but you're constantly just having enough resources to get through these encounters by the skin of your teeth. As a DM who struggles to balance combat encounters for my players, I have mad respect for the combat designers. They removed the campy tone mostly, but they kept the unapologetic shots, lines, and combat encounters that still give the ridiculous action movie vibe. Love this bit, but more so the anime as heck camera work with the dramatic zoom ins and outs. You go first. No way. Leon's a man that sticks to his mission. So much respect. A little flub goes one too far. When we have the ability to edit everything to be perfect, it shows real talent to make sure it's not because we humans certainly aren't. Might want to take care of any leftover errands before going this way. Be ashamed to live the rest of your life wondering, what if, am I right? You are, so go ask out that cute person, go try a hobby you've been too scared to, and go shit on that person's porch that wronged you 10 years ago. I mean, in way game of telling us that this is the point of no return moment. No hesitation or contrived reason why she's gotta be hung up there the entire boss fight. And girl boss Ada, who gets to be strong and powerful right alongside her squeeze Leon. I don't even know what to say, except for it, this is why I love Eastern developers. Like our dude has an eyeball in his mouth, it's so wacky. It could also mean something similar to when you put your foot in your mouth. 
his vision for the world and the plaga has gotten him into this awkward situation. It wouldn't be the final boss without being the biggest thing we've ever fought, right? <laughs> the achievement quote. A burn bigger than the RPG that Leon threw at Sadler. I'll give you a holy body. Cute. Damn, I was gonna say the same thing. Leon would be good at gaming with- Thank you for the Rams Capcom for my goopy brain. You alright? I'm not sure that was insane. OG Ashley after escaping the island. Oh, and the sunrise after a long night trope. You can't hate it. It's the first time we actually see the sun. You know, I could put in a word with my dad. Have you assigned to my detail, if you're interested? You don't need me. You proved you could handle yourself. Even if you could use a lesson in knife safety. <laughs> playing around with the overtime joke and playing off the arc these two have gone through. Leon keeping to his mission and not taking handouts. And Ashley becoming competent to take care of herself. All wrapped up with a cute joke. I do not pay you to ask questions. Wesker? So this basically confirms Capcom is going to be remaking some of their most notorious games. They seem up to the challenge with their streak of amazing games. Capcom rarely ever misses and has been on a hot streak lately. I'd say they're up to the task. This is how remakes should be done. The absolute pinnacle. Take what you had, elevate it, make meaningful changes and modernizations while not losing sight of what made the core game so special. Leaning too far in either direction lands you on a Last of Us Part 1 remake that's a little too safe and samey or land on a Warcraft Reforge. Capcom has been schooling developers all over on how to do it right and f*** me. I'm so glad to finally join my voice to the choir that this is one of the best games I've ever played. I want to say the best, but I'm still in the honeymoon phase. It's incredible and made better by the fact that it doesn't even replace the original. There are enough differences here that when you go back in a way, it still feels like a totally different game, but with the same bones. Just as I was getting tired and bored of games being too by the numbers and same, the RE4 remake comes out to prove to me that it's all about execution that matters. I've played so many third person shooters, but there's a beauty to this one that Makes it so damn entertaining. And also, let's not forget the biggest thing that keeps this game to its 2000 roots. Unlockable cosmetics. You can actually get things by playing the game. What a weird time to be alive to pray something like that. But anyways, if you're waiting to see some more content in the game before picking it up, I implore you to do so. It is going to be tough to top this as my game of the year, and I think it's finally time I started my professional playthrough. Remember everyone, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza!